Hey everyone, it's time for the next video. Hope everyone enjoyed their, um, their Thanksgiving and passed out from sleeping from eating too much turkey. Uh, I had a quiet one on my own. Didn't really do anything. Okay, so next one uh, performance and limitations number four. A. Aerodynamics. Number one, what are the four dynamic forces that act on an airplane during or maneuvers? Lift, gravity, thrust, and drag. That one's an easy one. Number two, what flight condition will result in the sum of the opposing forces being equal? In steady state straight and level unaccelerated flight the sum of the opposing forces is equal to zero there can be no unbalanced forces in steady st straight flight newton's third law this is true whether flying level or when climbing or descending it does not mean that the four forces are equal it means the opposing forces are equal to and thereby cancel the effects of each other Three, what is an airfoil? State some examples. An airfoil is a device which gets a useful reaction from air moving over its surface, namely lift, wings, horizontal tail surfaces, vertical tail surfaces, and propellers are examples of airfoils. Number four, what is an angle of incidence? The angle of incidence is the angle formed by the longitude axis of the airplane and the cord of the ring. It is measured by the angle at which the ring is attached to the fuselage. The angle of incidence is fixed and cannot be changed by the pilot. Number five, what is a relative wind? The relative wind is the direction of the airflow with respect to the ring. When a ring is moving forward and downward, the relative ring, uh, wind moves backward and upward. The flight path and relative wind are always parallel but travel the, in opposite directions. 6. What is the angle of attack? The wind, uh, the, the point of going to the stall. The angle of attack is the angle between the ring cord line and the direction of relative wind. It can be changed by the pilot. Oh, pardon me. Number seven. What is Bernoulli's principle? The principle, the pressure of a fluid, liquid or gas, decreases at points where the speed of the fluid increases. In the case of airflow, high speed flow is associated with low pressure and low speed flow with high pressure. The airfoil of an aircraft is designed to increase the velocity of the airflow above its surface, thereby decreasing pressure above the airfoil. Simultaneously, the impact of the air on the lower surface of the airfoil increases the pressure below. This combination of pressure decreases above and increases below produces lift. What are several factors which will affect both lift and drag? Ring area, lift and drag acting on a ring are roughly proportional to the ring area. A pilot can change ring area by using certain types of flaps, i.e. flower flaps. Shape of the airfoil. As the upper curvature of an airfoil is increased up to a certain point. The lift produced increases. Lowering the aileron or flap device can accomplish this. Also ice or frost on the ring can disturb normal airflow, changing its uh, camber and disrupting its lifting capability. Angle of attack. As an angle of attack is increased, both lift and drag are increased up to a certain point. 
velocity of the air. An increase in velocity of air passing over the rim increases lift and drag. Air density. Lift and drag vary directly with the density of the air. As air density increases, lift and drag increase. As air density decreases, lift and drag decrease. Air density is affected by these factors, pressure, temperature and humidity. What is a torque effect? Torque effect involves Newton's third law of physics. For every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. Applied to airplane, this means that as the internal engine parts and propeller are revolving in one direction, an equal force is trying to rotate the airplane in the opposite direction. It is greatest when at low air speeds with high power settings and a high angle of attack. <sighs> Number 10. What effect does torque reaction have on an airplane on the ground and in flight? In flight, torque reaction is acting around the longitude axis, tending to make the airplane whirl. To compensate, some of the older airplanes are rigged in a manner to create more lift on the ring that is being forced downward. The more modern airplanes are designed with engine offset to counteract this effect of torque. On the ground, during takeoff roll, an additional turning moment around the vertical axis is induced by torque reaction. As the left side of the airplane is being forced down by torque reaction. That's why the plane always moves to the left as you start to take off. More weight is being placed on the left main landing gear. This results in more ground friction or drag on the left tire than on the right, causing a further turning movement to the left. 11. What are the four factors that contribute to torque effect? Torque reaction of the engine and propeller. For every action there is an equal and opposite reaction. The rotation of the propeller from the cockpit to the right tends to roll or bank the airplane to the left. Gyroscopic effect of the propeller, gyroscopic pre precession applies here. The resultant action or deflection of a spinning object when a force is applied to the outer rim of its rotational mass. If the axis is a, of a propeller is tilted, the resultant force will be exerted 90 degrees ahead in the direction of the rotation, and in the same direction as the applied force. It is most noticeable on takeoffs in tail draggers when the tail is raised. Corkscrewing effect with the propeller slipstream. High speed rotation of an airplane propeller results in corkscrewing rotation to the slipstream as it moves we rearward. At high propeller speeds and low forward speeds, as in takeoff, the slipstream strikes the vertical tail surface on the left side, pushing the tail to the right and yawing the plane to the left. As asymmetrical loading of the propeller P factor, when an airplane is flying with high angle of attack, the bite of the downward moving propeller blade is greater than the bite of the upward moving blade. This is due to the downward moving blade meeting the oncoming relative wind at a greater angle of attack than the upward moving blade. Consequently, there is a greater thrust on the downward moving blade on the right side, and this forces the airplane to yaw on the left. Centrifugal force is the equal and opposite reaction of the airplane to the change in direction in it acts equal and opposite to the horizontal component of lift. What is load factor? Load factor is the ratio of the total load supported by the airplane's wing to the actual weight of the airplane and its contents. In other words, it is the actual load supported by the rings divided by the total weight of the airplane. It can also be expressed as the ratio of a given load to pull of gravity, i.e. to refer to a load factor of 3 as 3 g's. 
In this case, the weight of the airplane is equal to 1 g, and if a load of 3 times the actual weight of the airplane were imposed upon the wing due to a curved flight, the load factor would be equal to 3 g's. Number 14. For what two reasons is load factor important to pilots? Max, please be quiet. A because of a uh, please be quiet because of the obviously dangerous overload that is possible for a pilot to impose on the aircraft structure B because an increased load factor increases is the stalling speed and makes stalls possible at seemingly safe flight speeds 15 what situations may result in load factors reaching maximum or ex being exceeded? Level turns. Lo the load factor increases at a terrific rate after a bank has reached 45 degrees or 50 degrees. The load factor in a 60 bank turn is 2 Gs. The load factor in an 80 bank turn is 5.76 Gs. The wind most must produce lift equal to these load factors if altitude is to be maintained. Turbulence. Severe vertical gusts cause a sudden increase in angle of attack, resulting in large loads which are resisted by the inertia of the airplane. Speed. The amount of excess load that can be imposed upon the wing depends on how fast the airplane is flying. At speeds below maneuvering speed, the airplane will stall before the load factor can, be, can become excessive. At speeds above maneuvering speed, the limit load factor for which an airplane is stressed can be exceeded by abrupt or excessive application of the controls or by strong turbulence. 16. What are the different operational categories for an aircraft and within which category does your aircraft fall? The maximum save load factors, limit load factors specified for airplanes in various categories are as follows. Normal, plus 3.8 to minus 1.52. Utility, mild aerobatics including spins, 4 plus... 4.4 to minus 1.76 aerobatic 6.0 to minus 3.0 my plane is a sky it will be a Cessna 152 Skyhawk so it's going to be a normal 17 what effect does an increase in load factor have on stalling speed a load factor increases the stalling speed increase any airplane can be stored at any airspeed within the limits of its structure and the strength of the pilot. At a given airspeed, the load factor increases as angle of attack increases. And the wind stalls because the angle of attack has been increased to a certain angle. Therefore, there is a direct relationship between the load factor imposed upon the wing and its stalling characteristics. A rule for determining the speed at which a ring will stall is that the stalling speed increases in proportion to the square root of the load factor. Basically, every time you hear that alarm go off on the plane, it's, you uh, run in the risk of the ankle attack when stalling the plane. 18. Define the term maneuvering speed. Maneuvering speed is the maximum speed at which the limit load can be imposed, either by gust or full deflection of the control surfaces, without causing structural damage. It is the speed below which you can, in smooth air, move a single flight control one time to its full deflection. For one axis of airplane rotation only, pitch, roll, or yaw, without risk of damage to the airplane, Speeds up to but not exceeding the maneuvering speed allow an aircraft to stall prior to experiencing an increase in load factor that would exceed the limit load of the aircraft.
Note, operating at or below maneuvering speed does not provide structural protection against multiple full control inputs in one axis or full control inputs in more than one axis at the same time. 19. Discuss the effect of maneuvering speed of an increase or decrease in weight. Maneuvering speed increases with an increase weight and decreases with a decrease in weight. An aircraft operating at reduced weight is more vulnerable to rapid accelerations encountered during flight through turbulence or gust. Design limit load factors could be exceeded if a reduction in maneuvering speed is not accomplished. An aircraft operating at or near gross weight in turbulent air is much less likely to exceed design limit load factors and may be operated at the published maneuvering speed for gross weight if necessary. 20. Define loss of control in flight and describe several situations that might increase the risk of a lo uh, loci accident occurring LOCI is defined as a significant deviation of an aircraft from the intended flight path and it often results from the airplane upset. Maneuvering is the most common phase of flight for lock eye accidents to occur. However, those accidents occur in all phases of flight. Situations that increase the risk of this include uncoordinated flight, equipment malfunctions, pilot complacency, distraction, turbulence, and poor risk management, such as attempting to fly IMC when the pilot is not qualified or proficient in it. 21. What causes an airplane to stall? The direct cause of an every stall is an excessive angle of attack. Each airplane has a particular angle of attack where the airflow separates from the upper surface of the wing and stalls occur. This critical angle attack varies from 16 degrees to 20 degrees depending on the airplane's design, but each airplane has only one specific angle of attack where the stall occurs, regardless of airspeed, weight, load, factor, and density and altitude. 22. What is a spin? A spin in a small airplane or glider is controlled recoverable or uncontrolled, possibly unrecoverable maneuver in which the airplane or glider descends in a hellacial path while flying at an angle of attack greater than critical angle of attack. Spins result from ag aggravated stalls in either a slip or a skid. If a stall does not occur, a spin cannot occur. 23. What causes a spin? The primary cause of inadvertent spin is exceeding the critical angle of attack while applying excessive or insufficient rudder, and to a lesser extent, early on. 24. When are spins most likely to occur? A stall or spin situation can occur in an any phase of flight but is most likely to occur in the following situations a engine failure on takeoff during a climb out pilot tries to stretch glide to a landing area by increasing back pressure or makes an uncoordinated turn back to departure runway at a relatively low airspeed b cross control turn from base to final slipping or skidding turn Pilot overshoots final, possibly due to a crosswind, and makes an uncoordinated turn at low airspeed. C. Engine failure on approach to landing. Pilot tries to stretch glide to runway by increasing back pressure. D. Go around with full nose up trim. Pilot applies power with full flaps and nose up trim combined with uncoordinated use of rudder. Number 25. What procedure should be used to recover from an inverted spin? A. Close the throttle if not already accomplished. B. Neutralize the ailerons. And C. Apply the full opposite rudder. 
D. Briskly move the elevator control forward to approximately the neutral position. Some aircraft require merely a relaxation of back pressure. Others require full forward ele elevator pressure. Once the stall is broken, the spin will stop. Neutralize the, the rudder when the spinning stops. F. When the rudder is neutralized, gradually apply enough aft elevator pressure to return to level flight. Remember pair, power reduced to idle, A ailerons precision to neutral, rudder apply full opposite against rotation, and elevator apply opposite forward or neutral movement to break the stall. Once the spin rotation stops, neutralize the rudder and begin applying back pressure to return to level flight. What causes adverse yaw? When turning an airplane to the left, for example, the downward deflection aileron on the right produces more lift on the right wing. Since the downward deflected right aileron produces more lift, it will also produce more drag, while the opposite left aileron has less lift and less drag. This added drag attempts to pull or fear the aircraft's plane nose in the direction of the raised wing, right. That is, it is tries to turn the airplane in the direction opposite to that desired. This undesired veering is referred to as the adverse yaw. Twenty-seven. What is ground effect? It's when you fly lower. If when you started taking off and you want extra speed, you get extra speed by staying low as you take off instead of. Ground effect is a condition of improved performance the airplane experienced when it is operating near ground. A change occurs in the three-dimensional flow pattern around the airplane because the airflow around the wing is restricted by the ground surface. This reduces the wing upwash and downwash, and the wing tip for tips. In order for ground effect to be significant magnitude, the wing must be quite close to the ground. 28. What major problems can be caused by ground effect? During landing at height or approximately one tenth of the wing span above the surface, drag may be 40% less than when the airplane is operating out of ground effect. Therefore, any excess speed during the landing phase may result in significant float distance. In such cases, if care is not exercised by the pilot, he or she may run out of runway and options at the same time. During takeoff, due to the reduced drag and ground effect, the aircraft may seem capable of takeoff well below the recommended speed. However, as the airplane rises out of ground effect with a deficiency of speed, the greater induced drag may result in very marginal climb performance or the inability of the airplane to fly at all. In extreme conditions such as high temperature, high gross rate and high density altitude, the airplane may become airborne initially with a deficiency of speed and then settle back to the runway. Section B. Weight and Balance Define the following. Empire weight, oh, sorry, empty weight. The weight of the airframe, engines, or permanently installed equipment and unusable fuel, depending on the FARs under which the aircraft was certified, either the undable oil, undrained oil, or full reservoir of oil is included. Gross weight is the maximum allowed weight of both the airplane and its contents. Number two, what basic equation is used in all weight and balance problems to find the center of gravity location on an airplane and all its components? Weight times arm equals moment. By arrangement, by rearrangement of this equation to the forms, arm CG equals total moment divided by total weight. I think that means movement, not moment. With any two known values, the third value can be found. Remember, A, W, A, M. Weight 
times arm equals moment. I, th I really do think that it means movement, but the book wrote moment by mistake. I think that's a typo. Number three, what performance characteristics will be adversely affected when an aircraft hasn't been overloaded? A. Higher takeoff speed. B. Longer takeoff run. C. Reduced weight and angle of climb. D. Lower maximum altitude. E. Shorter range. F. Reducing reduced cruising speed. And G. Reduced maneuverability and edge higher stalling speed. I higher landing speed J longer landing roll K excess rate on the nose wheel four what effect does forward center of gravity have on an aircraft's flight characteristics higher stall speed stalling angle of attack is reached at a higher speed due to increased wing loading slower cruise speed increased drag Greater angle of attack is required to maintain altitude. More stable, the center of gravity is farther forward, further farther forward from the center of the pressure, which increases longitude stability. Greater back elevator pressure required. Longer takeoff roll. Higher approach speeds and problems with landing flare. Number five, what effect does rearward center of gravity have on an aircraft's flight characteristics? Lower stall speed, less ring loading. Higher cruise speed, reduced drag. Smaller angle of attack is required to maintain altitude. Less stable, stall and spin recovery more difficult. The center of gravity is closer to the center of pressure, causing longitude instability. Number six, what are the standard weights assumed for the following when calculating weight and balance problems? Crew and passengers, 190 pounds each. Gasoline, 6 pounds US gallons. Oil, 7.5 pounds of US gallons. And um, water, 8.5 pounds. gallons section C performance uh, aircraft performance number one what are some of the main elements of aircraft performance a takeoff and landing distance B rate of climb C ceiling D payload E range F speed G fuel economy H maneuverability and stability Two, what factors affect the performance of an aircraft during takeoff and landings? A. Air density, as in density altitude. B. Surface wind. C. Runway surface. D. Upslope or downslope of runway. E. Weight. What effect does wind have on an aircraft performance? Takeoff. The effect of a headwind is to allow the aircraft to reach the liftoff speed at a lower ground speed which will increase airplane performance by shortening the takeoff distance and increasing the angle of climb. The effect of a tailwind is that the aircraft needs to achieve greater ground speed to get the liftoff speed. This decreases aircraft performance by increasing takeoff distance and reducing the angle of climb. Landing. The effect of wind on landing distance is identical to its effect of takeoff distance. A headwind will lower ground speed and increase airplane performance by steepening the approach angle and reducing the landing distance. A tailwind will increase ground speed and decrease performance by decreasing the approach angle and increasing the landing distance. Cruise flight. Winds aloft have somewhat an opposite effect on airplane performance. A headwind, headwind will decrease performance by reducing ground speed, which in turn increases the fuel requirement for flight. A tailwind will increase performance by increasing the ground speed, which in turn reduces the fuel requirements for the flight. Number four, how does weight affect takeoff and landing performance? 
Increased gross weight can have a significant effect on takeoff performance. A. Higher liftoff speed. B. Greater mass to accelerate slow acceleration. C. Increased retarded force, drag, and ground friction. D. Land in a longer takeoff distance. The effect of gross weight on landing the distance is that the airplane will require a greater speed to support the airplane at the landing angle of attack and lift coefficient result in an increased landing distance. 5. What effect does an increase in density altitude have on takeoff and landing performance? An increase in density altitude results in a increased takeoff distance, greater takeoff TAS required, b reduced rate of climb, decreased thrust and reduced acceleration, C. Increased true airspeed on approach and landing, same IIS. And D. Increased landing roll distance. Oh, yeah, those, the V, yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Six. Define the term density altitude. Density altitude is the pressure altitude corrected for non standard temperature under standard atmospheric condition. Air at each level in the atmosphere has specified density and under standard conditions pressure altitude and density altitude identify the same level. Therefore density altitude is the vertical distance above sea level in the standard atmosphere at which a given density is found. 7. How does air density affect aircraft performance? The density of the air has a direct effect on a life produced by the wings, b power output of the engine, c propeller efficiency, and d drag forces. Number 8. What factors are affect density? Sorry, what factors affect air density? Altitude, temperature, and humidity. The higher the altitude, the less dense the air. The warmer the air, the less dense it is. More humid air, more humid air is less dense. Number nine. How does temperature, altitude, and humidity affect density altitude? Density altitude will increase low air density when one or more of the following occurs: high air temperature, high altitude, high humidity. B. Density altitude will decrease high air density when one or more of the following occurs. Low air temperature, low altitude, low humidity. Number 10. Knowing the following speeds of for your airplane. VSO, store speed. VS1. Uh, VY is the rate of climb. Best rate of climb speed. Vx is the point that you will you, you lift the nose of best angle of climb speed, the calibrated airspeed at which the airplane will obtain the highest altitude in a given horizontal distance. The best angle of climb speed normally increases with altitude. Vle maximum landing gear extension speed. Vlo maximum landing gear operating speed. E F E maximum flap extension speed. V A is maneuvering speed. V no normal operating speed. V N E never exceed speed. Number eleven. What information can you obtain from the following charts? Take off charts. These allow you to compute the takeoff distance of the airplane with no flaps or with specified flap configuration. You can also compute distances for no flap takeoff over a 50 foot obstacle scenario, as well as with flaps over a 50 foot obstacle. The takeoff distance chart provides for various airplane weights, altitudes, temperatures, winds, and obstacle heights. B. Fuel, time, and distance to climb chart. This chart will give you the fuel amount used during the climb, the time it will take to accomplish the climb, and the ground distance that will be covered during the climb. 
To use this chart, obtain the information for the departing airport and for the cruise attitude. See cruise and range performance chart. This is designed to give true airspeed, fuel consumption, endurance in hours, and range in miles at specific cruise configurations. D. Crosswind and Headwind Component Chart This allows for configuring the headwind and crosswind component for any given wind direction and velocity. Landing Charts Provide normal landing distance as well as landing distance over a 50 foot obstacle. F. Stall Speed Performance Charts These are designed to give an understanding of the speed which the airplane will store in a given configuration will typically take into an account the angle of bank, the position of the gear and flaps, and the throttle position. Define the term pressure altitude and state why it is important. Pressure altitude is the altitude indicated when the altimeter setting window barometer a barometric scale is adjusted to 2992. This is the altitude above the standard datum plane. A theoretical plane where air pressure corrected to 15 degrees Celsius equals 2992 in HG. Pressure altitude is used to compute density altitude, true altitude, true altitude and other performance data. The f number 13, the following questions are designed to provide pilots with general review to the basic information they should know about their specific plane before taking a flight check or review. What is the normal climb out speed? What is the best rate of climb speed? What is the best angle of climb speed? What is the maximum flap expansion speed? What is the maximum gear extension speed? What is the stall speed in the normal landing configuration? What is the stall speed in the clean configuration? What is the normal approach to land speed? What is the maneuvering speed? What is the red line speed? What en engine out? glide speed will give you maximum range. What is the make and horsepower of the engine? How many usable gallons of fuel can you carry? What are the fuel tanks or where are the fuel tanks located and what are their capabilities? Where are, uh, where are the fuel vents for your aircraft? What is the octane rating of the fuel used by your aircraft? What are the fuel sumps well, where are the fuel sumps located on your aircraft and when should you drain them? What are the minimum and maximum oil capacities? What weight of oil is being used? What is the maximum oil temperature and pressure? Is the landing gear fixed, manual, hydraulic or electric? If retractable, what is the backup system for lowering the gear? What are the nose wheel turning limitations for your aircraft? What is the maximum allowable demonstrated crosswind component for the aircraft? How many people will this aircraft carry safely with a full fuel load? What is the maximum allowable weight the aircraft can carry with baggage in the baggage compartment? What takeoff distance is required if a takeoff were made from a sea level pressure altitude? What is your maximum allowable usable, useful load? Solve a weight and balance problem for the flight you plan to make with one passenger at 170 pounds. Does your load fall within the weight and balance envelope? B. What is the final gross weight? C. How much fuel can be carried? D. How much baggage can be carried with uh, full fuel? And E. Know the function of the various types uh, various types of antennae on your aircraft. 
all of that information can be found in any POH on any plane. Additional study questions. Number one, you have just landed on a 2,100 foot grass strip to pick up two passengers and you plan to depart in the early afternoon. The temperature will be warmer than expected so you compute the density altitude and determine that the required takeoff distance is over 50 feet obstacle with 2,000 feet. Your weight and balance calculations indicate that you would be 100 pounds under gross weight. If you decide to take off, explain the potential hazards, the overall risk and the actions you could take to mitigate the risk. Number two, why are some aircraft not allowed to perform forward slips and flaps extended? Oh, sorry. Why are some aircraft not allowed to perform forward slips with flaps extended? Number three, while in route with the CG change as your aircraft uses fuel. Sorry, let me read that again. While in route, will the CG change, central gravity change, as your aircraft uses fuel? Number four, what causes an airplane except a tail, T tail, tail wheel, to pitch? nose down when power is reduced and controls are not adjusted. 5. Will the indicated airspeed at which an aircraft stores change as altitude increases? Six. How does an aircraft limitations, performance, fuel and capacity, navigation capability affect the total risk of a flight? What can a pilot do to mitigate the risk? 7. What forces what force causes an airplane to turn? 8. The amount of excess load that can be imposed on the structure of an airplane is dependent on what factor? 9. Define the term service ceiling and absolute ceiling. What are the values of your for your aircraft? Number 10, the performance chart numbers for your aircraft are based on test flights conducted in a new aircraft. During pre flight planning, how can you minimize the risk when using the charts to make performance calculations for takeoff, in route, and landing? 11, you're planning a VFR departure from Durango, Colorado, KDRO, elevation 6,689. MSL and a Cessna 172. Explain the potential hazards that exist when departing KDRO as compared to departing KLAX elevation 127 feet MSL. Is there anything that you can do to mitigate the risk? That's the end of section f four. We're halfway. So the next time I go back to watch this video, I will answer those questions. <laughs> All right.